<laughs> Try this again. Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we are going to be considering and going over today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The authorized version. Okay? Please read along with me. And of course, read along with me because I make mistakes. I'm fallible. The scriptures are infallible. Okay? So, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. We got a lot of scripture we're going to be going over today. This is not a milk video again. This is more meat, but the it's more of a meat video, but the subject matter in and of itself is milk. Questions. I love questions. Especially the ones from brethren who ask because they really want to know. I praise the Lord for you, brethren. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Angels, Satan, that old serpent, the devil, do they have souls? <laughs> you know how many times the word soul appears in the scriptures? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Got to the point, brother. It's like, okay, <laughs> okay, over 400 times. The word soul appears. Did I go through the I'm all? No. No. No, I did not. Got to a point. It's like, okay, there has to be a, you know, you talk about a labor, brother. Uh, there has to be, okay. So we go with angels and angel and stuff like that. But the question comes, angels, do they have souls? Does the devil have a soul? No. In your authorized version of the scriptures, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. Trinitarians love this one because they think it proves their satanic, wicked, uh, filth-ridden doctrine. Hold on one second. Okay. Hey, Catholic. Yeah, here you go. <coughs> there, there's your trinity. To hell with your trinity. Okay. I think I just made myself very clear about how I feel about your little false god, okay? Trinitarians like Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 because they think that it proves their satanic, wicked, perverse, dung-ridden doctrine of one God and three persons. No, it does not. Um, the Father, speaking of himself in plural form, is not unusual. You know, uh, you speaking of yourself in plural form is also not unusual. You might think to be argumentative and disputatious, well, yeah, it is. Have you never said, like, well, we got to go do this and it's only you? Okay, well, give us a kiss, you know. Uh, speaking of ourselves in the uh, plural and not in the third person like uh, narcissistic, egotistical maniacs do sometimes. No, but for God our Father... Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, not, and not modalism or anything like that. But God speaks of himself in the plural form. Okay? There is zero shred of evidence to suggest that in Genesis chapter 1 that he is talking to angels when he says this. I personally believe and I forget what video that was. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. D d did the devil know? Did the devil know? Okay. Beg your pardon. I'm writing this down. I gotta write this down on a separate thing, uh, thing here. But um, I have said to you that I do believe that angels were before the creation of man. Okay. This right here, even though I do believe, okay, that angels were somewhere in the mist before man. Okay, I do believe that. 
Um, I could be slated to be to believe that they came after man because uh, especially with some of the evidence we are going to see here. Okay, but verse 26 on to verse 28 is no proof whatsoever to try to say number one that it's one uh, three person one god nonsensical trinity or it is not proof whatsoever to suggest that god is referencing onto angels because and we're going to see this almost right away because if that were the case he were talking to angels that would mean angels have souls they do not they don't but let's read and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them mankind have dominion over the flesh of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and questions about the satanic roman catholic uh, trinity will be for you in the description box you're a trinitarian you're a catholic and you got the wrong god okay let's continue so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, yes, Adam came first. And then came woman from Adam's rib. Okay, of man is what woman means. Okay, male and female. There are, there's only two genders, people. Okay, there's not three, four, five, six, or quintuplet, or whatever you want to say. There's only two genders. Only, um, only people dull in their head would actually believe that there is more than two genders. People who love their sin, more so the like. Anyway, let's continue. So, man was created in the image of God. What does that mean? You and I have a spirit, soul, and body, just like God does. Okay? Right. Uh, the, the blog was uh, promoting this uh, old fart guy, Nephilim, something like that. Some crazy. The things you try to promote to put off the suspension of disbelief, you nitwit twit. It's full of wonder. Okay. But the one guy, he said in uh, one of his large dreams, which I did not listen to the whole thing. I skipped around. He said, man is two. That we have a body and a spirit. No, man is three. We have a spirit and the soul, and the body. Okay, we're going to prove that right away. Okay, let's continue. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay? So, in the image of God created he him. God has a soul, obviously. Man has a soul, obviously. Some of you, and I've, I've, I've seen this, there are people, of course, Christians, who's like, well, I don't believe in the eternality of the soul. Oh, soul annihilationism, huh? Ah, yeah. So, so the whole thing about soul annihilationism is, well, if your soul is going to be annihilated, so why not live in sin? Because, hey, you're not going to suffer for eternal eternity in hell, right? You see, the, the, you know, you're trying, remember, you're trying to deceive people, you idiot. Um, you, you should pay a little bit more attention to at least what you're trying to deceive people with, dude. Come on. Come on. But then again, you're getting old, you don't care, and the, the longer you go, the more you shoot yourself in the foot. So whatever. Okay, hell is eternal. Okay, hell is eternal. All right? But Genesis 1 and, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. On to 3. This is the Godhead in action. It is not three persons. Three aspects. Three components of who God is. Okay? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the capital S, Spirit of God, and, you know, the Holy Ghost, okay, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Word made flesh, okay, Lord Jesus Christ. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. See, the components of God, 
spirit, soul, body. Okay? God the Father. Okay? God the Father. In the beginning, God. Spirit of God. The Word. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Um, Jeremiah, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. The Johannian comma. Christians who are perverted by uh, the Jesuits. You know, the Johannian comma. Uh, which uh, some Christians like to say, this is talking about the Trinity. And they always add. They always add something to try to make their doctrine fit. 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The Soul. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Not the Father, it's the Soul. The capital W Word. One of seven appearances of capital W Word. All about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, John chapter 1. The Word was made flesh. Flesh did not become God. God became flesh. All the heretics... Especially the Christians get that one wrong on purpose, okay? And the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, okay? So the Father, in the beginning God, the Word, and God said, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, moved upon the waters, and these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. You can reference 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe that's verse 23, and also Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Man is comprised of three, you idiot. Okay? We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? God doesn't have some... Really? Just some quick ones here. Uh, just just uh, quick ones here. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 5. Watch out for a guy. <laughs> Dude. Remember, I know you're getting old and you don't care anymore. I get that. Okay. Remember, you're trying to deceive people, remember? Okay, because you're working for your mother. Okay. You, you really ought to pay attention and think a little bit about the stuff that you're trying to promote. Okay. <laughs> you idiots. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 23. Uh, Jeremiah, what was it? Jeremiah chapter 5. Oh, oh, what, what, uh, what was I thinking of? One second, please. I wrote. Sorry about that. Jeremiah 5, 23, on to verse 29. Okay, sorry about that. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait, as he that set a snares. They set a trap, they catch Men, which is exactly what the enemies of our Lord, those who work for the Vatican, do. They watch the saints. They observe them on how to mimic and to appropriate that type of behavior onto themselves to deceive you. Okay? As a cage full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. And you can link that in with Revelation chapter 18. Uh, about uh, Mystery Babylon. You know, Rome, she's a, a thing of hateful birds. <laughs> and then you turn it, you wicked Trinitarians, with your little stupid bird that goes around and poops on people. Yeah, okay. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the rights of the needy do they not judge. <laughs> Oh, let's not get started on how the lack of judgment of Christianity, except up against the saints who tell them, hey, you're in something false. Verse 29. Shall not I visit for these things, saith the Lord? 
Shall not my soul, soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Well, your soul is your mind, your heart, and your, 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 the essence. It's a little bit deeper than that. It's a little bit deeper than that. Okay? Is there such a thing as a soul gland? No. You know how you know? Because the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism, are expert at torture. Catholicism knows the body of mankind very well. You look at the Fox's Book of Martyrs about how the Jesuits implemented all these creative ways of being able to torture someone without killing them. You know, that's, that's the one thing about the medical profession. They're run by Jesuits, and unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of the sons of Ishmael, because Islam and Roman Catholicism have the same mother, they're one and the same, basically. Uh, you, you, you Muslims, your religion was created by Rome. Okay, we ain't got time to get into that. But... It's interesting that a lot of the sons of Ishmael, Muslims, Arabs, uh, seem to be uh, more predominant within the medical field nowadays. But like I said, Rome with all their torture of the body of Christ, the brethren and sisters you read about in Fox's Book of Martyrs, they know the body of man. They know the body of man. If there was such a nonsensical thing as the soul, have any of you heard that? There's a soul gland somewhere in the, they say, the human body. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you human? There's one for the, there's one for the description box. <laughs> yeah. Are you a human? Okay. But th I've heard that. It's like there's a soul gland. Uh, no. Um, the Jesuits are masters of torture, and they know the body of mankind very well. No. The soul of man is what is eternal. Okay? Your spirit and your soul are what is eternal. Okay? All right? All right? This body, this specific body, came from dirt. This don't last. Okay? All right? Now, another one, um, Je uh, Jeremiah 9, just one verse, verse 9. Okay? These are two quick re uh, references to show to you that God has a soul. Okay? And our Lord now uh, even says on his way to Jerusalem to get crucified, uh, you know, and he's like, uh, now is my soul heavy. And what shall I say? Father, deliver me from this hour before this hour I came. He said, my soul. Okay? And the soul of the Godhead is the Father. And remember, Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Word made flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? But Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 9. Again, shall not shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Hmm. Okay? Now go back to Genesis. Now we're going to go to Genesis chapter 2. Just one verse. Now in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, if God was referring on to angels, but he is actually speaking of himself in the plural form. Not that there are three persons or a stupid little dove going around woo, 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 and dropping turds on them, okay? To hell with your trinity! Okay? Okay? To hell with your trinity! That is not who God is. Don't get me started. But, all right. If that were the case that he was addressing angels, which he is not, then we would, and we're going to see, <laughs> plus angel, angels, soul, over, um, not one time, with reference unto an angel. Angels don't have souls. The devil doesn't have soul. There is argument, and uh, I understand this argument. One of, the, uh, one of the reasons why Satan rebelled, well, Satan wanted to be God, okay? He wanted to be God, and we're going to look at that last of all. But Satan wanted to be God, but uh, it has, I have heard the argument, well, one of the things that got Satan all up in a bunch is because he was jealous that we, mankind, 
has a soul like God does and the angels don't. Okay? Uh, I've heard that argument before. Um, scripturally, um, Satan wants to be God. Um, I understand the argument, though. I understand that. It does kind of make sense. Uh, you, you're walking on very shaky ground in Scripture if you want to try to prove the reasoning while Satan was jealous because we had a soul. No, Satan wants to be God. You guys who like your sin, who think you are God, you're like your father, the devil. You want to be God. Okay, good luck. Okay, but Genesis chapter 2, just one verse. Verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, breath, breathe, spirit. And, and man became a living soul. Now look at that verse. Man. Man. Joints and marrow. Breathe. Breathe. God breathe. Spirit. Soul. That went crazy. Nephilim, dude, or whatever. Is that guy. Man is two. No. Man is as a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Your mind, your emotions, your heart. And it, does that encompass the soul? Yes, it does. Is that, the, um, is that explicitly just what a soul is? No. It's deeper than that. Okay? But see, if you try to relegate to the soul just being your mind, your emotions, your thought... Well, when you die, then what happens with those, right? Yeah. Man is three. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? <laughs> Got to hand it to the guy from Maine. He did that beautiful video where he did, he imposed three of himself mocking the train. That one was good. That, you got to give that, that guy credit. That was really, really good. Okay? There's not, God forbid, Three of me walking around. God forbid there are three of you walking around. No, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. God has a soul. We have a soul. Okay? Now, interesting, okay, um, in Genesis 35, Genesis 35, verses 16 on to verse 20. Genesis 35. These are the things that are eternal of man. This body that came from dirt yes we will get a new body okay we read about that in first corinthians 15 okay this right here this sagging sin suit you know some of you have joked about my turkey neck yeah, go ahead i'm 50 years of age man i don't know how much time i got left i don't care okay <laughs> but okay this is made of dirt okay this is made of dirt but genesis 35 16 on the 20. And they journeyed from Bethel. And there was but a little way to come to e Epharath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, excuse me, thou shalt have this son also. Now pay attention. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing. This dies, the body. Your soul and your spirit are what is eternal. Okay? The soul does not get annihilated. Okay? That, that's heresy. And that's a justification for you to continue living in sin. Because if your soul gets annihilated, I don't believe in the eternality of the soul. You're an idiot. I'm, I'm being polite. You're stupid. You, you really are. Because, hey, if your soul is annihilated, then, you know, hey, I live in sin because, hey, I'm just going to go and my soul be burned up. Well, God's merciful. See, because God is merciful, God is also a God of judgment and wrath. Okay? You spend this life, you know, plucking your nose at the Lord, you're going to spend eternal, eternity in hell. Okay? All right? But anyway, soul was departing. 
for she died, that she called his name Ben-Onai, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave, that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. Verse 18, For it came to pass as her soul was departing, <laughs> uh, one idiot that you're uh, trying to bolster up there, okay? Okay, or uh, whatever. Uh, you, you ought to show him this verse, okay? Man, three, dude, okay? That's significant because when you got someone uh, denying the eternality of the soul, that's heresy. That's heresy, okay? All right? But, oh, oh wait a minute, Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 7, Ecclesiastes 12, my favorite chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes, because that deals with our mortality. And also, again, I get, dude, dude, listen. Dude, someone who says man is only two, that we have a body and a spirit but no soul, that's heresy. That's heresy. One dude is claimed to be 63 years old, and he's saying man is only spirit and body, no soul. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> go on. You ought to know better than that. So brilliant, huh? Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now they might come to this verse. And say, see, man is only two. But what do you do about with Genesis 35, verse 18 there, sugar britches? Leviticus 5. Leviticus 5. Okay? Leviticus, my personal favorite book out of the Torah. The first five books of Moses. Okay? Gen uh, Leviticus chapter 5. Verse 1. And if a soul sin, a soul can sin? And hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether, and is a witness whether he hath seen or known of it. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. A soul sin. It's for the death, burial, and resurrection too, by the way. Okay? Oh, and there's another one for the description box. Circumcision. Okay? Circumcision. All right? And also, now, and, and uh, you got to watch it with these guys. You got to watch it with these guys because you go to Ezekiel 18, just one verse. Okay? Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Verse 20. And I've encountered this. Okay? Ezekiel 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Soul annihilationism. Uh, oh, wait a minute. See, there's something here about the Old Testament that you all aren't intuiting. Okay? All right, we'll do it. one second. Let's finish the verse. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So a soul sinneth, and a soul dieth? What, 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 what's going on? And then the soul annihilationist will go to, and this one, this one you can really catch him on. Matthew 10, verse 28. Matthew 10 verse 28 and fear not them which are which and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul okay Jesuits they know a lot about the body of man but they can't kill your soul but rather fear him which is know what you do take a little pen circle that four letter word if you got to take one of these and even mark it because they'll read it, but they pass right over it, not even paying attention to the fact. But rather fill him, fear him which is 
Abel, not Cain, brother. Stop it. Abel to destroy both soul and body in hell. So see, soul of annihilationism. You, you go to hell, he's like, whoa, 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 sugar britches. Sweet pot. Look at the verse. You're, you're, you're glibly going over Abel purposely. He's able to. There's no scriptural proof that he does. Okay, He's able to destroy the soul, to, to kill the soul. Yes, he is, but he doesn't. Or else he wouldn't be a just God, huh? Okay? See, and, and, and the thing that y'all, you soul annihilationists, are not intuiting, number one, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. In this dispensation, the video for this will be in the description box for you. The circumcision, okay? Today in this dispensation, when you go the elect way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, have being contrite, taking responsibility of your actions and not blaming others and having the hell scared out of you and in that fell swoop of a moment you can't wait to call on the Lord he saves you, he seals you with himself the Lord in you is what is known as that circumcision made without hands before the law or before, you know, under the law the Holy Ghost who is today a permanent resident in the believer it's not our salvation to lose, wasn't there. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go. There wasn't that circumcision made without hands. We're not going to get deep in that today because we've already done the work and the, the, and the video will be the circumcision video. If you have any questions about that, you wicked soul annihilationist, okay, check out that video. The circumcision made without hands. See, under the law... That circumcision wasn't there, so if you touch something, it would affect your soul. Your soul doesn't die. The soul that sinneth there, it will die, meaning that person will die. Why? Because there wasn't that circumcision made without hands separating the two. Okay? Like it says in Romans 8, sin has been relegated to dirt, flesh. And by that circumcision made without hands, the Lord Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory, that is the circumcision made without hands. That is why you can touch a dead body. Like, you know, if you can, you know, a corner guy, that's whatever. That's why you can eat pork. That's why you can eat shellfish. Praise the Lord. Okay? That is why. Because that circumcision made without hands is there. Okay? All right? That's what you guys aren't intuiting. When you go to Ezekiel 28, say, see, soul annihilationism. Hmm? No. The circumcision made without hands wasn't there during the law. Okay? It was only in something. Okay? All right? All right? See, that, number one, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And number two, when you come to Matthew chapter 20, uh, 10, verse 28, you, you just pass over Abel. It says he's able to do it. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. The smoke of their torment goeth up forever and ever. Okay? All right. And oh, oh here in Revelation chapter 18. No, no, we're not going to, you know, the souls of men. Revelation 18 verse 13. Okay, we were going to mention, okay? All right? Soul does not get annihilated. Watch out for these heretics. It's like soul annihilationism. That's just a justification for you to live in sin. Okay? Kind of like the antinomianists, and we won't get started on that. Okay? So like I said, check the description box. If you're going to cause a stink and not check the evidence, the scriptural evidence, um, you are answering a matter before you hear it. It is folly and shame unto you. The Lord rebuke you, and you can go to hell. Okay? So shush, shut up. All right? Okay. Now, shift. Angel and angels. We are not going to be really looking into the word angel or angels. But see, the thing about angel, you got to remember, let's look at the very first appearance of the singular, and the singular appears before the plural, of angel. Now, here's why we're not going to concentrate specifically on the word angel in this video. Why? Because the angel of the Lord, 
And as we're going to see, that is the context of angel when it first appears in scripture. Okay? The angel of the Lord is God the Father. Okay? It's God. All right? There are those out there who argue that. I wonder why. Okay? But the angel of the Lord. There are singular occurrences of the word angel where they're talking like uh, Gabriel and stuff like that. Okay? And that is defined by context. But see, angel of the Lord. Okay? Angel of the Lord. That's, it's God, the Father. Okay? All right? Most of the time. Is it in every single appearance? No. No, it isn't. Context defines that. Okay? All right? Remember that. But the very first appearance of the word angel. Genesis 16, 7 on to verse 14. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? Whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself unto her under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Right there, this angel of the Lord is God the Father. This, this is God the Lord. In a form of a man. Okay? In the Old Testament, you know, like in Daniel, uh, we're going to look at uh, Jacob, you know, in his wrestling match. Okay? When God appeared in the Old Testament under the law, okay, uh, before uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, made of a woman, made under the law, okay, before that, um, it was, you know, the angel of the Lord. And he appeared as a man. A man. said this, I believe, in Wednesday's video. I'm going to say it to you again. There is no such thing as a female angel. There are no female angels in Scripture. There are no angels that come from Ireland with red hair who said, God loves you. That is heresy. Angels in Scripture are men. Male. They appear as man. There are no female angels. According to Catholicism, but then again, that's Satan's church and religion. Okay? That, they don't count. Scripture. There are no female angels, dear sir, dear friend, whoever you are. Okay? Alright? There are no female angels. Especially from Ireland saying, God loves you so much. That's heresy. Okay? There are no female angels. Get that through your head. Okay? Anyway. But, right here, verse 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Who can do that? God the Father. Okay? That it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. He will be a wild man, like the Arabic people are, okay? His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name, and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Hagar, Hagar the Egyptian, the Hamite understood she was speaking to God the Father. You know, you black Hebrew Israelites, you wicked heretic devils, <laughs> you guys are Hebrews. You're not Hebrews. Okay? You're not a Hebrew. You're not a Jew. Get over yourself. Uh, Angel of the Lord, first appearance, was onto a uh, Hamite. Egyptian. That's of the descendant of Ham. In Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, you know, who has presented the gospel, you know, um, 
you know, after the official rejection of the gospel of Israel, the Hebraic Jews, okay, in Acts chapter 7 and Acts chapter 8, um, the Ethiopian eunuch was the one that was gone to. A Hamite. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints is the common salvation for all. I'm inclined to agree, though, when you hear the black Hebrew Israelites say that Christianity is the white man's religion. Well, Japhethite pro pro predominantly is, and of course, Rome is Japhethian. I'm not a Christian either, by the way. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Wherefore the well was called Bir Laharoi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. Okay? First appearance of angel and in context. Now, every time you see the word angel of the Lord, the phrase angel of the Lord, uh, it depends on the context in which it is appears. Generally, it is being referenced unto the Father, God, our, God himself. Okay, there are other appearances where the and the angel of the Lord, where it is not a direct thing onto the Father. Okay, but that depends on context. This is why we're not concentrating on that. Because besides, we are going to show you that angels don't have souls. That's the point of this video. That aspect of it, you can go on and get go for yourself. Okay, angels plural. Angels plural is where we're going to concentrate a little bit more. Because angels of the Lord, okay, I didn't check on that, but angels means what? More than one, at least two, right? Okay? So, uh, yeah, it was driving me crazy, brother. I'm going through those, it's like, dude, that's got it. Okay, I mean, I, I, I was prepared. I sat here last night. If it would have taken six hours to go through all over 400 references, I would have. But I'm sitting here, and then this Lord's like, you know, Brad, uh, there's, we could do this a little. It's like, okay, okay. And then this is where we went, okay? Now, angels, plural. Genesis 19, one on the two. Now, pay attention. Pay attention. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Where we read on the verse 2. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. And tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early. And go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. First appearance of angels. And it's two angels, plural, okay? Genesis 18, verses 1 and verse 5. Now pay attention, pay attention, okay? Don't miss this. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door. In the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three, look at me, don't look at me, look at the verse, three men. 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 Male. Men. Again, these stupid Trinita Trinitarians, it's like, that's the Trinity. <laughs> uh, 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 Genesis 19 uh, verse 1 and there came two angels one was a physical manifestation uh, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh uh, one is the physical manifestation of God the Father okay okay there's a technical word for that I don't want to butcher my tongue trying to say it but okay one was God the other two were angels. It's not the Trinity. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think you've had too many cookies. Okay, Catholic? Seriously. But let's continue, okay? And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. Two were angels. Yeah, angels are men. Angels are male. The Apocrypha, by the way, Catholic, is not inspired scripture. In your Apocrypha, that's where you get prayers for the dead. You have an angel teaching people to use witchcraft. Oh, uh, come on. Come on. The majority of Catholic doctrine today can be found in the Apocrypha. <laughs> and the Apocrypha contra contradicts the established canon of Scripture anyway. Uh, what is it? The angel Raphael recommending unto the son of Tobit on how to use witchcraft to ward off devils? <laughs> the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay? Let's continue. Yes. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And then you go, if you were to continue reading, uh, God, Father, who, you know, Precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, you know, said about Sarah, you know, hey, why'd you laugh? Told you you're going to have a son. Is anything too hard for me? Okay? Two were angels. The other one was God. In the form of a man. They're men. Angels are male. Angels are men. Different. Okay? And Hebrews chapter 13, just one verse. Verse 1. Okay? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Oh, excuse me, verse 1 and 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So, what we have looked at the evidence thus far, angels can appear to be as men in the form of a man. Okay? And for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. One of the individuals that I met years ago, years ago, as a lost, long-haired sodomite sinner engaging in uh, um, an affair with a married woman, okay, um, I met a man who witnessed to me like I had never been witnessed to before. I remember that man. I remember that man. Was he an angel? Is it outside the realm of possibility that you could one time actually meet an angel and you wouldn't know about it? We got a little some scriptural evidence right there. You know, you can make the argument, well, Brad, come on, even you know that the book of Hebrews is for the Hebraic Jews. I know that. I know that. Uh, like the one guy also that I met in Chicago years ago, when I think I was in my teens. The Hamite man who's like, you know, if I cut my wrist, your wrist, what color is our blood? It's like, wow, is he an angel? I don't know. Is it outside the realm of possibility? No. No, it isn't. <laughs> okay? But th th the point is, stay on point. Angels are men. They appear as men. Okay, they're male. They appear as man. And you could be talking or entertaining one, not even know it. Okay? All right? Now go to Genesis 28. <clears throat> Genesis 28. Verses 10 on to verse 15. Genesis 28, verses 10 on to verse 15. 
And Jacob went out from Beersheba. Jacob, uh, verses 10 and verse 15. And went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed that behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God, plural, right there, ascending and descending on it. Angels going up and down. Okay? All right? That's why we looked at that. Angels going up and going down. Okay? And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Okay, angels, plural, of God. Of God, going up and down on the ladder. That's why we looked at this, okay? Now, Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, verse 1, to start. And Jacob went his way, and the angels, plural, of God, met him. Angels, plural. Angels, plural, at least two. Okay? Now, here's another thing about, you know, God as man would appear as a man, okay, in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, made of a woman, made under the law. You know, God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. Watch out for that. Okay? But, under the law, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, when God would appear, he would appear as a man, just like the angels would. Okay? But remember, God has a soul. Angels don't. Genesis 32, verses 24 on to 32. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. We're looking at this to show you that the male perspective and that God would appear as a man as angels would appear as a man. Okay? He's got the Father. Okay? Let's continue. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go. For the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. What does Israel mean? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, I like this verse, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, for he, for I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Now you might want to be cute and bring up Exodus and like no one can see me and live, okay? But the point is, God came to Jacob as a man. Okay? As a man. Before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Alright? God, when he would appear in the Old Testament to people, he would appear as a man. Look just like us. Okay? Okay? Not as pretty of you, as you, of course. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, okay? Same thing with an angel. 
You cannot entertain an angel unawares. Okay? Why? Because they look like us, like man. They're men. Okay? And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not the sinew, sinew which shrank, and they hold true to that to this day, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. They do that with the what they do to this very day. Okay? Alright? Now, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. We did this in, um, I think we did this in Wednesday's video. Okay? But Hebrews chapter 1. Alright? Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of of his person and we deal with this I believe in Wednesday's video I believe if not I'll find the one okay all right and up and and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels and see it's the Jehos who say that Jesus is nothing but, uh, uh, I think it's the Jehos, that say that he's nothing but uh, uh, Michael the Archangel, because they obscure that thing in Daniel. Okay? Uh, no, Jesus is God the Father. Okay, he created the angels. Okay? As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. So angels are to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, because Jesus Christ is God the Father. Unless you're a Trinitarian and you believe in a demoted thing and you don't have the right God in the first place. Dude, you're a Trinitarian, you have the wrong God. Okay? Did <laughs> you your God is Satan. Okay? And, and of the angels he saith who maketh his angels spirits. That one guy, okay, angels can appear in the form of a man. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? Okay? Angels have a spirit. Obviously, they're a spiritual being, but they also have a body. They don't have, okay? Just like an animal. Think about it. In Ecclesiastes 2, the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Uh, your little fluffy has a body and a spirit, no soul. And see, again, these twit heretics, it's like, well, man is too, has a body and a, a spirit, no soul, you know. Uh, so we're like animals, huh? Evolution? Evolution says that your great ancestor is a monkey. <laughs> okay? And monkeys don't have a soul. They have a spirit and a body. So see, when someone's like, well, they deny the eternality of the soul or that man has a soul, you're an animal. You're an evolutionist. You're a heretic. Okay? See how that works? But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. And God said, okay, 
and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. And thy year shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Okay? Ministering spirits. To do what? Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. We're going to look. Uh, <laughs> angels, fallen angels cannot be saved. Okay? That's that, you know, love Satan, that idiot from England who, with the bald head, you know, the uh, love Satan uh, <laughs> thing, which will be in the description box. That, uh, and that's universalism, that even the angels will be saved. We'll look at verses proving that that's not the case. Who can be saved? Mankind. Man. Women, you came of man. So shut up! I love you. I love you, sisters. Shh. Okay? You are of man. Woman of man. Mankind. Shh. Kaite. Okay? Man who is made in the image of God. We are the only ones that can be saved. Yeah, it, it, but a little fluffy can't be saved. Okay. Okay. A little fluffy can't be saved. Why? They don't have a soul. Comprende, huh? Okay? All right? Now, corroborating uh, verses. Uh, Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Hopefully we can finish Psalm 8 uh, before this video is out. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. And you can cross-reference this with 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You know, he has cho chosen the foolish and weak things of the world to confound the mighty. You know, us simple saints who, because of the Lord who dwells within us and his perfect standard, are able to confound the Jesuit-trained scholar, yea, hath God said, guys, in the church buildings, okay? All right? When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Reference unto the Lord right there, okay? And hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the parts of the seas. O Lord, our Lord. Look at how that's worded. Lord, uh, Lord, all capitals. Our Lord, capital L. Who is that talking about? I'll give you 50 guesses and the first 49 don't count. Okay? How excellent is thy name above all the earth. And there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Okay? All right? Psalm 104, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? This is what whoever it was. I don't believe it was Paul. We won't get off on that. Whoever wrote Hebrews. Okay? Uh, Psalm 104, verses 1 on to verse 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. And Jesus Christ, he is the light. Okay? Who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain. Okay? 
who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. We just read that in Hebrews. Who maketh his angels spirits. Who laid the foundation of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Who maketh his angels spirits. I believe that the angels were there. And he made, the, it's like, okay, here's this man made after my image. Okay, after our image, because the language, he speaks of himself in the plural, not that there are three persons, that's heresy. And I believe the Lord's like, okay, minister to them. Could the angels have been made after man, but to minister unto us? There is evidence to suggest that. There is. Okay? Regardless, stay on point task of the angel is to what? In the mouth of two, two or three witnesses. Ministering spirits. To minister. Okay? Now, let's look at some of the attributes of angels. Okay? Job 4. Job 4. Let's learn a little something about angels, shall we? Job 4. Oh, come on, I was just there, dude. Job 4, verses 15 on to verse 18. Now remember, this is Eliaphas the Temanite and his rebuke against Job where he accused Job. Okay? But, he says something true. Job 4, 15 on to verse 18. Then a spirit passed before my face, the hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was a voice, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants. Verse 18. Verse 18. And we'll read verse 19 as well. And his angels he charged with folly. Ah, so that tells us what? An angel is capable of what? Committing folly. There is this belief that angels have no free will. Oh, what do you say about Satan? What do you say? Satan's not an angel. He's an anointed cherub. You are right. But you got to remember, dear friend, uh, cherub is a classification of angel, a spiritual being. Okay? You're right. Satan is transformed into an angel of light, deception, but he is called by God the anointed cherub that covereth. We'll look at that last today. Okay? You are right. But remember, cherub is a classification of angel. Okay? All right? A spiritual being. Okay? All right? So, an angel can commit folly. How much less them that dwell in houses of clay? Houses of clay, you know, body. Whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth, making reference onto the body of man. Okay? So what do we see? An angel is capable of what? Committing folly. Now if they had no free will, how would that be possible? I'll let you I'll let you roll that one around in your brain case for a while. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, just one verse. 2 Peter chapter 2. One verse, verse 4. 2 Peter 2, verse 4. For if God... Now, right, right. Okay. That one bald-headed universalist idiot. You know, well, even the angels will be saved. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, 
and deliver them into chains of darkness to be, be reserved unto judgment. Hmm. Hmm. Don't worry, we'll read uh, Matthew 25, 41, just not yet, brother. Okay? So, if God spared not the angels that sinned, You can sin ignorantly because you don't know, but then, as if, you know, by coincidence, which doesn't exist, uh, you're made aware that was sin. It's like, oh, I didn't know. Now you do. Okay? So, again, if angels sin, and they aren't ignorant, that means what? They've made a choice. Hmm. Angels have free will, too. Really? Yeah. Uh, Jude 6. Jude 6. <clears throat> and angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And we'll look at this here a little later. Uh, don't you know that we'll be judging angels? You know, if an angel comes to you... Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? So, angels go to hell. Angels can commit, can commit folly. Ooh. So, angels can sin and commit folly. Why? Because angels have free will. See, see, you, you people out there who say that there's no such thing as free will, you, it's ironic because you have the free will to believe that stupidity. Isn't that, isn't that a delicious irony? Okay, see, the God who is, is not a God of coercion. That's the God of uh, Calvinism. Okay, that's the God of Calvinism. Even some Catholics, like that jerk who said to me, oh, she's your mother and you just don't, don't know it. And then he made an off comment referring to me as a phallus. Hey, you, you, <laughs> I think, hey, hey, you see this dude who, get, who left that comment to me? I think you need to choke down some more cookies there, pal. Okay? All right. Angels are capable of sin. And they have free will. Really? Angels also have the ability to eat. Psalm 78. Brother, God didn't know what he was doing. Last night when we were going through this, I, I, and I read this, uh, the you were the first one I thought of with how, how your mind works sometimes. Psalm 78, 21 on to 24. And if you hadn't have thought it until I said it, well, again, God didn't know what he was doing. Psalm 78. Angels have the capacity to eat. Now, angels can appear in the likeness of men. There isn't any evidence rather than this about angels that they eat. Is it a thing of required necessity to eat to maintain a body made of dirt? No. You know, Jesus, when he resurrected, he asked if he had any meat. He had a broiled fish and a honeycomb. Was that to maintain, or did he do that just to prove? I think he did. It's like, here, give me something to eat, you know? All right? When we are with the Lord... Uh, there is ample evidence to suggest that we will be able to eat, but not because of necessity. We got to eat, but hey, we want to eat. Don't that, let me taste that. Man, oh man, that tastes good. Let me eat more of that, okay? But, stay on point. Angels have the ability to eat. Psalm 78, 21 under 24. Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob. 
And anger also came up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. Did I say 24? Uh, it's supposed to uh, verse 25. Uh, 25. Verse 25. I'm sorry, I said to verse 24. It's verse 25. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Hmm. Now, is the angel's food the little chocolate cupcake thing, which is absolutely delicious, which has marshmallow? No, 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 no. Okay. Point. Stay on point. Well, what was the angel's food? Is it that cream-filled cake, which is delicious? Uh, obviously, no. Is it meat? Or is it the... Stay on point. Point. Angel's food food. Angels have the capacity to eat. That's the point. Okay? So, angels have the ability to fo commit folly, sin. Why? They have free will. They can eat. We also know in Psalm 78 that there is such a thing as evil angels. Psalm 78 verse 49 he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. In John chapter 4, there's a verse, you go find it, where Jesus says, God is a spirit. Bibles that come from Rome take out the A, and it says God is spirit in a Bible. See, you take out the A, how are you to know, unless you go to a Roman Catholic Jesuit uh, trained cemeterian priest in one of your phallus houses, how are you supposed to discern which is which? Because your Bible that takes out that A blurs the distinction. Uh, there is good angels, and there is none good but God, and there is clearly evil angels. And I, I kind of reckon that an evil angel is one who... Um, commits folly and sins and then uh, gets reserved onto uh, chains of darkness forever and go to hell eventually to be cast in the lake of uh, fire okay with the angels that sin okay so angels can, can commit folly and sin they can eat there are also such a thing as evil angels now, Matthew 25, verse 41, just one verse, okay? Then shall, there, they, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. See, but you want to be like your father, the devil, and be your own God, and choose your own way, save yourself by your own belief, or go whatever. Since he's your father, Satan, you know, you're going to go to where he's going and his angels. Evil angels. Okay? All right? Again, Angels can commit folly and sin. Why? They have free will, obviously. They have the capacity to eat. There are also evil, clearly, both angels. Yes, there are. We also know that angels are strong. Very strong. A lot stronger than a man. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, 19 on to verse 22. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Right there, another verse, verse 20. Number one, they excel in strength. An angel is stronger than you and I. Okay? 
obviously. Physically, obviously, I believe. But also look at the verse again very carefully. That do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word, choosing to do what God said. Angels also... See, see dude. Dude. You Calvinists. God is not a God of coercion. God doesn't even force the angels to do what he wants them to do. Because when you force someone to do something, love by choice is taken out of the equation. You're a robot. You're a machine. Not even the angels are forced to do his will. They also have free will. Okay? But see, with an angel, they disobey. They, there's no forgiveness. See, and that's another thing for these stupid universalists. Okay, that, that one bald-headed jerk He's like, uh, oh yeah, even the angels will be... No, you're a heretic. You're all of your father, the devil. You even said you love Satan, okay? <laughs> okay, it's funny. That guy backtracked is like because uh, people were just like calling him on it. But he, he even backtracked on that. But uh, yeah, angels have free will. Free will. God doesn't force you to do anything. You got to make the right choice. Even the angels were held to that. Bless ye the Lord, all his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. And the angels are ministering spirits. Okay? Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Also, now, we, we address this in the video, The Two Raptures, which will be in the description box. The Two Raptures is this uh, erroneous teaching, which even the uh, ah, Mr. Ruckman taught, the Two Rapture Theory. Uh, there are two incidences with come up hither. The one in Revelation chapter 4, the redemption of the purchased possession, uh, which, you know, happens in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, you know, you lost people, a saint will be witnessing to you, and then, you know, they hear, you're going to hear thunder, they're going to hear, come up hither, and they disappear, you blink and they're gone. Okay, you don't see them rise up to go to heaven. The two witnesses, when the Lord says, come up hither, the enemies who tormented Moses and Elijah, they will see Moses and Elijah go up into heaven. So it's not... It's nothing like the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? The two raptures, you know, because this, well, the angels go and get the wicked and stuff like that. We talk about that in the two raptures video. Check it out. Okay? We got to stay on point in this video. And hey, if you're going to cause a stink and not search the evidence from Scripture yourself through the video, then shut up! And go around, go along, and go to hell. Remember, your God loves you. Okay? But, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Okay? Like I said, we discussed this in the, the two raptures video. Okay? More questions about this. Matthew chapter 13. 37 on of verse 43. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. And in context, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. What kingdom is he talking about? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? The ones that are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That are going to because the gospel that's going to be preached unto them will be the gospel of the coming kingdom of heaven during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the 
angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let them hear. And right there, okay, the angels, by the way, Son of Man shall send forth his angels. Son of Man, his second coming, sent forth his angels. Who are those angels? That's going to be you and I. We're likened unto the angels. Don't worry, we're, the flow of this is going to show you that, okay? All right? Okay, let's continue. Again, the kingdom of heaven. What kingdom is he talking about? Okay? Kingdom of heaven is always a physical, literal kingdom of heaven that is going to be in Jerusalem. Okay? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant, who man seeking goodly pearls. For when he had found one pearl of great price, when he sold all, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, and what are we reading to here? Oh, we were supposed to read only to verse uh, 43. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop there. But what we want to point, point, verse 39, we read for context. We were supposed to go to only verse 43, excuse me. But point, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As they, okay, the reapers are the angels. He comes back in his second coming. Psst. The angels, that's us, okay? Now, go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Okay? Matthew 22, verses 22 on to verse 29. 29 on to 30. Matthew 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, <laughs> All you Christians, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. As the angels are God, of God. Okay? Are as like them. Okay? Also, Mark 12, Mark 12, verses 24 and 27. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, nor the power of God? Christians don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. Okay? And what is the power of God? Christ in you, the holy, the hope of glory, you know, the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus Christ, power of God. We proved that, I believe, on Wednesday, okay? And in other videos. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither, now look at that, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Okay? And some will point to this, well, angels are sexless. Or I've even heard homorphodites. They have both. Uh, no. We have already looked and proved. Scripturally. Angels are male. There are no female angels. Okay? There are no female angels. There are no red-headed Irish female angels who like coffee, who say, God loves you so much. That's heresy. Angels are male. Angels are man. Men, not man. Men. Men. Okay? Man. Man was created in the image of God. Sorry, but angels are male. Okay? We 
will be like unto them in that, in that, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Okay? Angels in heaven don't have any necessity as you and I, as mankind do. Like that. Okay? All right? Let's continue. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And man became a living soul. Ye therefore do greatly err. Okay? Oh, and look at verse 43. Oh, and uh, what was that? Uh, no, 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 that... that that, that's good. That, that, uh, that proves the point. That proves the point. Okay? Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Verses 8 on verse 9. Revelation chapter 22. Verses 8 on verse 9. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard, had heard and seen... I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which shewed me these things. An angel, huh? Then saith he to me, See thou do it not. Don't worship an angel. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. We will be like the angels. When you know after after the resurrection, I believe as well do other uh, people who believe the scriptures. John is seeing a saint who is likened unto an angel. Calls to him an angel, but say, "Hey, see thou do it not. I for I am thy fellow servant." Okay. All right. Point. In the resurrection, we will be likened unto the angels. Point two. Don't worship angels. Ah. But see. And I think about you crazy Pentecostals. And you, you nitwits out there. Who claim that you've seen God. Yeah. Matthew 13. Uh, no, no. Uh, Matthew 24. 36. And for this, um, the wrong God and uh, the day and the hour that Jesus didn't know the day and the hour, those two videos, both of them will be in the description box uh, for you to go over, okay? We're not going to go over them here, okay? We're going to stay on point, okay? Hey! If you're not going to consider the evidence in Scripture, going through the videos about this, then shut up! You go ahead and go to hell. And remember, your God loves you. Okay? But Matthew 24, one verse, verse 36. Okay? Matthew 24, verse 36. Just one verse. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Why are we looking at that? Not the angels of heaven. Some of these Pentecostals will claim that they see God. And that the God they think they see are telling them things that, number one, are contrary to Scripture, rightly divided. Rightly divided. Salvation changes in the dispensation. Grace is there throughout all the dispensations, or we go up like a puff, okay? These people who think they see visions of angels or an angel appears to them, okay? Um, I'm not denying that, okay? But when these guys see angels generally, mostly the Pentecostals and stuff like that, well, I saw an angel. Okay. Is it possible?
Sure. Hey, we read Hebrews 13, 1, right? Unawares. But, okay, what this angel tell you? And then they go about and tell you things that are contrary to Scripture, rightly divided. Try a, a perfect example. Trying to pull stuff from the book of Revelation, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble, and try to make them doctrine to the day for today. That that's one of the big cult prints. Well, the angel said to me that you know blah 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 about you know the river Euphrates or whatever. It it's usually happens in that context. Well, they'll try to take something from the book of Revelation and try to make it applicable doctrine for today. I uh, no, dude, you didn't see an angel. <laughs> you saw an angel, uh, an evil angel, angel transforming himself into an angel of light, okay? But you didn't see an angel of God, okay? That's usually what happens with these Pentecostals. So, and see, when these guys like, well, I, an angel told me this. What did he tell you? Then you hear what they tell you. It's contrary to Scripture, rightly divided. What does that mean? They try to pull something from the Old Testament to make a doctrine for today. Like you can lose your salvation today. You can't. Or that you got to keep the law today in order to be saved. And no, you don't. No, you don't. Or something like the trumpets or something is happening today. No, they ain't. That's the culprit. That's what happens with these twits, mostly and Pentecostals, who think that they see an angel comes to them and reveals something to them, and it's contrary to Scripture, rightly divided. You haven't seen an angel from God. But of your father the devil, because you want to boast yourself. These guys who claim to have been to heaven and hell, okay, who will join oh, shut up. Okay, okay, shut up. No, they haven't been to heaven and hell. Or hell. Okay, no, they haven't. Okay, they're lying to you. They might have seen an hallucination, who knows? But they haven't been to either or. Okay? When you go to hell, <laughs> you ain't getting out. And if you've been to heaven, you don't want to come back. Okay? And there's no evidence to support that in Scripture. Okay? All right? Just, just remember that. All right? But we'll be hitting this even more uh, because, like I said, these some of these angels uh, will like will come, well, the, the, an angel revealed to me when the rapture is going to happen. Or these guys, Jesus appeared to me and say, hey, get ready, the rapture is coming. Rapture. Notice I'm using that word. Okay? Give me a break. Okay? No. No. You're not seeing anything that comes from the God who is, but the little G God of this world. Your father, the devil. Mark 13, 32. One verse. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And you buy, oh, see this? Ah, shut up. We have two videos. No, didn't know the day of the hour. And um, the wrong God, where we address that very thing. If you don't want to uh, search the scriptural evidence to show what, the, what this is, then you shut up. You can go on, go to hell, and your God loves you. Okay? But, point again. These guys who get these, well, an angel came to me. Angel of the Lord appeared to me and told me the rapture is going to happen this, sir. And it's always, always, contrary to scripture, right, rightly divided. You didn't see anything from God. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 5. <laughs> Judge. We got to judge, people. We got to judge. We got to judge. All right. <laughs> okay. Kid, okay. Devils don't want you judging. Lost people got a problem with judgment. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law and go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? The world, therefore, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are not of the world. Okay? And if the world shall be judged by you, 
Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? I, right here. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? You Pentecostal, you claim that an angel came to you and said this, that, and the other thing. And let's say it's like, okay, let's say it's like you saw an angel and the, the, the fifth trumpet is going to happen uh, uh, October 9th or something like that. So angel, uh, whoa, 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 we're judging angels, okay? You said you saw an angel. Uh, no, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. The trumpet judgments happen during the time of Jacob's trouble, something that doctrinally is not for us today. Uh, you're, you're a heretic. You're lost. You no 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 no. You 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 didn't see an angel of God, okay? You saw an angel of the God of this world, of your father the devil. See, how, we're we're judging angels, okay? Okay. You with me? Okay. Let's continue. All right. If then ye have judgments of things that pertain to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in, in the church. I speak to your shame. Hey, all you Christians, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Shame on you. <laughs> I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that, can, that shall be able to judge between his brethren? And what does Christianity do? We're not judging you. You can't judge me. Only God, don't judge me. <laughs> that drives me crazy. Drives me crazy, you wicked, filth Christians. Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. <laughs> Don't judge will be in the description box. And hey, if you don't want to consider the scriptural scriptural evidence that will be presented to you, to you, but just want to go on scoffing, your God loves you, and you can go to hell. And there's this one atheist guy who apparently smokes some really good stuff. You ought to go talk to him. Okay? All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being a little coarse, aren't I? Huh? Um, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ transforming themselves. They are because they say they are. Yet they teach contrary to the scripture, rightly divided, and they usually believe in one God and blah, three persons who God is not. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There are two people um, who I used to know one I thought was a really good friend of mine, but but, but he, he got poisoned by this satanic, wicked, filthy, grotesque devil uh, from Canada who poisoned his mind, just like the divisive inerrant. Hi, yeah, you filth, okay, who lies to people and turns people against, tried to turn uh, uh, two brethren against each other. That's like, no, you're the fake one, dude. But uh, the one guy got deceived. But then again, he thought he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then he went off. He was deceived by that wicked Canadian. Okay. Uh, these guys who claim to see that, oh, I've seen God. No, you haven't. I'm not denying that you've seen something. Okay. Poltergeist, ghost, devil uh, manifestation happens in the real world. It really does. Okay? Um, uh, rabbit, there's this one, The Depths of Despair, <laughs> okay, um, who uh, I watched a couple of his stuff. He's got some really good evidence of, like, poltergeist activity about uh, things th being thrown around. It's like, those, those are devils. Okay? That stuff happens. That, that happens in real life. Okay? Yes. Ghosts, poltergeists, devils, stuff like that. Yes, that happens. Okay, that happens. Okay? So when they, these guys say, oh, I saw the Lord. They may have seen something. You have not seen the Lord. 
You haven't. Okay? You haven't. Uh, you've seen God? Okay, the charismatic, you've seen God? Okay? <laughs> All right? You've seen God, huh? We'll be in the description box. Okay, hey! You don't want to consider the scriptural evidence on that? Yeah, <laughs> your God loves you. Yeah. Verse 15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. One guy who I thought was a good friend of mine, but, you know, he, he that was a twofold thing. He thought he saw God, and he was deluded in that, but uh, he was poisoned by a Canadian. Um, yeah, he, you know, minister of righteousness. I've seen God. Oh, really? No, you haven't. Again, link for that in the description box for you, okay? And and now here, now like the little rant that we went on uh, before about, you know, how these people who claim to see God always, and this is the thing with it. This is how you can judge it. This is how you can judge it. Because these people who claim they've seen an angel or that God appeared to them, what they tried to feed off to you is something that is not Rightly divided. Galatians 1, 6 on to 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the gospel of Christ unto another gospel. Excuse me. On, in, in, let me read that again. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Another gospel, just believe and receive. You gotta go to the uh, church that Christ founded. You're elect because of your skin color. Just to name a few. Okay? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Oh, Catholics. Catholics. Antinomianists. Pentecostals. Calvinists. Some Baptists. But though we or an angel from heaven, so called, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. This is what they do. They claim they see an angel, but then it's either works salvation, you can lose your salvation, you got to keep the commandments, okay? Or they try to pull stuff from the book of Revelation and make it doctrinal for today. It's not the case. Okay? Or generalize it's by grace of faith from beginning to end. Only someone who is ignorant of scripture and in sin would willfully believe that garbage. Your doctrine is garbage there, uh, sweetie pie. Okay, you believe and receive heretic. Anyway, as we said before, so say I now. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. God loves you. Just believe and receive. That's man pleasing gospel. You need to be broken. You need to take responsibility. You put Christ on the cross. And unless you repent of your self-righteousness and cry out to the Lord for his mercy, you're going to hell. That's not man-pleasing, is it? No. God loves you. Just believe and receive. Hey, come to the church that Christ founded and eat a cookie. That's man-pleasing. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? In Colossians 2, just one verse. Verse 8. Colossians 2, one verse. Verse 8. No. Well, well, we said it. Why not? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, 
after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. Verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. See, you do it not. We're not supposed to worship angels. Well, the angel, I saw the angel. God, he appeared to me today. No, he didn't. An angel appeared to me and said this. Oh, that you got to keep the commandments today. No, he didn't. He didn't see an angel of God. They end up what? Worshiping the angel. The heart of worship, you know. Someone who is doing, who has put something uh, before the Lord, which is actual worship, where the heart of worship will be in the description box. Hey! You don't want to consider the scriptural evidence? Yeah, your God loves you. <laughs> okay? Someone will def to defend themselves. Well, I'm not bowing down to worship it. That's not the extent of all what is worship. Okay. See, that's a defensive measure. I'm not bowing down and falling on the ground worshiping my Christmas tree. But it's take precedence in your heart. And it's from Rome anyway. We won't go off on that. But see, that's a defensive measure. I'm not falling down and worshiping. That's not all the extent of what it is to worship. You don't want to check the scriptural evidence that will be presented to you about that? God loves you. You can go to hell. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Let no man beguile you of your reward in the voluntary humility of and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Okay? Angels are ministers, messengers. Acts 7. Acts 7. Okay? They're stronger than us. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only one. Acts 7. 51 on the verse 53. <laughs> He's stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do, oh, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, Jesus Christ. As your fathers did, so do ye. Ask, excuse me. All right. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, and they have slain them which shoot before of the coming of the just one, capital J and O, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it, by the disposition of angels. Angels being servants, ministering, Okay, messenger. All right. Galatians 3, one verse. Galatians 3, one verse, verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Why are we looking at this? To show that the disposition of an angel is to be that of a minister, a servant, to purvey a message. Okay? Luke 2, Luke 2, 9 to 14. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. 
For unto you is born this day in, this, in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that's a seven word, a uh, Savior. And where were we at 14? And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, heavenly host, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now this was not the angel of the Lord that came to purvey a message. But also you see Gabriel, you know, um, giving the message on to um, Daniel, okay? And also the angel that came on to Zechariah, okay? As messengers, okay? Disposition of angels, okay? Messenger, servant, minister, okay? So when you guys claim to have seen an angel... And they're telling you stuff that is contrary to Scripture, rightly divided. <laughs> oh, who, what, the, what was the messenger there? Who, uh, who's your daddy? Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense with the seed, that's a person, place, or thing, of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, and, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him? And the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and it has set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things, all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Okay? But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And look at verse 16. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, even though the mind of Christ is the mind of a servant, but took on him the seed of Abraham. Why didn't he take on him the nature of angels? If you haven't figured it out already, it's because angels don't have souls. Angels don't have souls. Neither does the devil. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. We're, we're almost done. We're almost done. Ezekiel 28. Verses 13 on to verse 19. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Talking about Satan. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, 
and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, ah, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Man was made in the image of God. Man became a living soul. There is zero scriptural evidence to support or suggest that angels or Satan had a soul. Has a soul. They don't. His angels are ministering spirits. Now, let's keep reading. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Clear. Satan is the anointed cherub. Cherub is a classification of angel, a spiritual being. And I have sent thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. No marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. All those bright, shining stones, you know. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. I do agree. I mean, that, that makes sense. That, you know, Satan was jealous or envious, I should say, of man because we are made in the image of God. While the angels are uh, stronger than we are, yes, they have free will. They can commit folly. They have the capacity to eat. There's evil angels, as well as good angels, and there's none good but God. Okay? They, they don't know everything. You know? They don't. They know a lot, but they don't know everything. Okay? They're messengers. They, you know, the reaper thing, which we talk about in the one video, okay? They don't have souls. But it, it makes sense... Uh, that Satan might have been envious of us because we were ma man was made in the image of God. We have a soul. Satan, angels don't. Isaiah 14, 12 on 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut us, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. Angels are powerful. Angels are spirit beings that can appear as men. There are no, no female angels. Okay. You see, this, you know, this was given to me uh, as a gift. This has the apocrypha. 
The Apocrypha is not inspired scripture, just so you know. But scripturally, there are no female angels. Okay? Angels are men. Not Irish angels with red hair who says God loves you. Okay? That's heresy. Okay? You, an angel, you can, according to scripture, encounter an angel and not know it. Why? Because they look like one of us. Okay? Angels have free will. They can sin and can commit folly. They have the ability to eat. There are evil angels out there. Because God is a spirit, you know. And how do you discern which is which? Perfect standard, the authorized version. Okay? Angels are strong. They fulfill specific purposes. Their disposition is that of a minister. And they are used as messengers as well. But they don't have a soul. Angels don't have souls. Man was made in the image of God. And God is spirit, soul, and body. And we are made in the image of God. Angels cannot be saved once they make the choice to go and uh, go against God. We've proven that today. That is going to be it for this video. This was done a lot later than I had anticipated, but, you know, Friday the 4th, uh, you know, things going on. So, going to get this uploaded. Uh, probably won't be uploaded till 6 o'clock uh, tonight, so, so you know. But hey, something for you to do on Friday night instead of watch that stupid television and Christian TV shows. Give me a break. Thank you, brethren. Thank you for watching if you do. I love you. We will see you in the next video.